Ever wondered why some infections just won't go away, no matter how many antibiotics you throw at them? The answer lies in antibiotic resistance. This phenomenon, where bacteria and other microorganisms evolve in response to the drugs designed to kill them, is a pressing concern in the world today. Antibiotic resistance isn't a distant threat, but a very real problem that's impacting global health right now. It's leading to the rise of so-called superbugs, harmful bacteria that can't be easily treated with our current arsenal of drugs. This presents a significant challenge to modern medicine. Without effective antibiotics, routine surgeries and treatments for diseases like cancer become much riskier. The stakes are high, and the urgency is real. In fact, it's estimated that by the year 2050, antibiotic resistance could cause 10 million deaths a year worldwide. Understanding antibiotic resistance isn't just for scientists, it's crucial for everyone's health. So how do these tiny creatures manage to outsmart our most potent drugs? Quite fascinating, isn't it? Let's delve into the cunning world of microorganisms. Our first stop is the concept of mutation. Now don't let the scientific jargon scare you away. Think of mutation as a game of telephone. You know the one where you whisper a message to the person next to you and by the time it gets to the last person, it's completely different. That's pretty much how mutation works. Bacteria are always duplicating, and during this process they copy their DNA. But just like the telephone game, errors can creep in. Sometimes these errors, or mutations, can accidentally give bacteria the ability to resist antibiotics. The mutated bacteria then multiply, and voila, we have a population of drug-resistant bugs. But that's not the only trick up their microscopic sleeves. Bacteria also have a neat party trick called gene transfer. If mutation is a game of telephone, gene transfer is like sharing cheat codes among friends. Bacteria can actually swap bits of DNA, passing on useful traits like, you guessed it, antibiotic resistance. Imagine being at a bacteria party where everyone's swapping their best survival tips. Hey, have you tried this trick to resist penicillin? Oh cool, here's my cheat code for dodging tetracycline. Before you know it, these microscopic partygoers are equipped to resist a whole arsenal of our drugs. And remember, all these processes are happening all the time, at a scale and speed that's hard for us to comprehend. It's like a never-ending high-stakes survival lottery, where the prize is a pass to the next generation. But here's the kicker. These are natural processes. Bacteria have been mutating and swapping genes for billions of years. It's their way of adapting to survive in a challenging world. It's not personal, it's just survival. These microscopic survival tactics are what lead to drug-resistant bugs. And that, my friends, is how our tiny adversaries stay one step ahead in the game of life. Ever heard of the antibiotic resistor, me? It's not a sci-fi concept, but it is fascinating. Imagine it as a vast library, a collection of all resistance genes found in both pathogenic and non-pathogenic bacteria. This includes genes that are currently active and those that are dormant, just waiting for the right conditions to spring into action. The resistome provides a wealth of information about how resistance originates and spreads. It's like a detective story, revealing the ancient origins of resistance genes and how they've moved between different bacteria over time. We can study the resistome to understand the mechanisms of resistance and predict where it might go next. It's a powerful tool that sheds light on the interplay between bacteria, their environments, and the antibiotics we use. By understanding the resistome, we can better predict and respond to the emergence of new antibiotic resistances. The resistome, in essence, is a glimpse into the history and future of antibiotic resistance. We're not just passive observers in this story. Human actions play a significant part in antibiotic resistance. So what are some practices that lead to resistance? Well, the overuse of antibiotics in healthcare is a pretty big one. You see, when we use these drugs too often or for the wrong reasons, we give microorganisms more opportunities to adapt and evolve. It's like we're throwing them into a survival of the fittest scenario, and the ones that can resist our drugs are the ones that come out on top. It's not just in healthcare, though. Agriculture is another major player in this game. When we use antibiotics to promote growth in livestock, or to prevent diseases in crowded conditions, we're again giving bacteria a chance to develop resistance. And these resistant bugs can then make their way into our food, our environment, and eventually, us. So how do we combat this? One word, responsibility. We need to be more judicious with our antibiotic use. 
that means only using them when they're truly needed, and always following the prescribed course of treatment. We can't just stop taking them when we start to feel better. That's a surefire way to encourage resistance. Infection control is another key countermeasure. By preventing infections in the first place, we can reduce the need for antibiotics. This means basic hygiene practices like washing hands regularly, keeping vaccinations up to date, and ensuring that medical procedures are done in a clean and safe environment. Lastly, we need to invest in the development of new drugs. Our current arsenal is becoming less effective as resistance grows, so we need fresh weapons to fight back. This means supporting research and development in this field. Remember, antibiotic resistance is not a distant threat. It's happening right now, and it affects all of us. But by understanding the issue and taking these countermeasures, we can slow its progress. We can all play a part in combating antibiotic resistance. When bacteria become resistant to multiple drugs, they earn a terrifying title, superbugs. These superbugs are born out of antibiotic resistance. To understand this, let's delve into some examples. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, vancomycin-resistant Enterococci, VRE, and carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteriaceae, CRE. Starting with MRSA, this bacterium is notorious for its resistance to methicillin, a type of antibiotic. The resistance occurs when MRSA acquires a gene known as MESIA. This gene codes for a protein that alters the binding site where methicillin would typically attach and incapacitate the bacterium. With this altered site, methicillin can no longer bind effectively, rendering it useless against MRSA. Next in line is VRE. Its resistance to vancomycin, an antibiotic often used as a last resort, is particularly alarming. VRE acquires resistance by altering the target site where vancomycin is supposed to bind. Instead of DLA-DLA, the usual binding site, VRE presents DLA-DLAC. This subtle change drastically reduces vancomycin's binding affinity, making it ineffective. Lastly, we have CRE, a group of bacteria resistant to carbapenem antibiotics. CRE's resistance is acquired through a mechanism known as enzymatic degradation. The bacteria produce enzymes such as KPC and NDM that break down carbapenem antibiotics before they can act. These processes of resistance acquisition are just a few examples of how bacteria can transform into superbugs. The shared theme here is alteration, whether it's altering the antibiotic's target site or producing enzymes to break down the antibiotic, these bacteria are continuously evolving to survive. And there's more. Superbugs don't just pose a threat because of their resistance to one or two types of antibiotics. They're most dangerous when they become resistant to multiple drugs, including those considered to be last resorts. This is the reality we face with superbugs. They're a product of antibiotic resistance, an evolution in action, and a testament to the relentless survival instinct of bacteria. Superbugs pose a serious threat to public health, particularly when they become resistant to last resort drugs. The misuse of antibiotics is like adding fuel to the fire of resistance. Let's consider vancomycin-resistant Enterococci, known as VRE, as an example. Enterococci are bacteria that live in our guts and are usually harmless. However, when they develop resistance to vancomycin, a last resort antibiotic, they become a serious threat. The overuse of antibiotics in both agriculture and human medicine plays a significant role in this resistance. In agriculture, antibiotics are often used not just to treat sick animals, but also to promote growth and prevent disease in healthy ones. This constant exposure to antibiotics provides an ideal environment for bacteria to evolve resistance. In human medicine, overprescription and patient non-compliance, such as not finishing a prescribed course, contribute to the problem. When antibiotics are used unnecessarily or improperly, bacteria have more opportunities to adapt and develop resistance. Every unnecessary antibiotic given in farms or clinics is a step towards more resistant bacteria. Of all superbugs, one stands out for its recent emergence and the serious threat it poses, CRE. Carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteria CI or CRE is a family of germs highly resistant to carbapenem antibiotics, our last line of defense. Its resistance mechanism is quite cunning. CRE bacteria produce an enzyme that breaks down carbapenem antibiotics, rendering them ineffective. This mechanism is acquired through plasmids, small pieces of DNA that can move from one bacterium to another, a swift and efficient mode of resistance spread. But why is CRE's emergence a grave public health concern? 
the answer lies in its potential for rapid spread, its resistance to our most potent antibiotics, and its ability to cause severe and often deadly infections. With limited options for treatment, CRE infections pose a significant challenge to healthcare providers, escalating the urgency to curb antibiotic resistance. The rise of CRE is a wake-up call, reminding us of the urgency to tackle antibiotic resistance.